Let's be honest, getting dragged on walks sucks. Charlotte's guardians contacted me because she was constantly pulling on leash and she wasn't enjoyable to walk. I'm going to show you step by step how I teach her to walk nicely without using any corrections. There are a lot of punishment based YouTube videos with claims such as teach your dog to stop pulling in 15 minutes. While these quick fix solutions might sound great, if you pay attention to dog body language you'll notice how stressed and uncomfortable the dogs are. This video is much different. Rather than viewing pulling on leash as a bad behavior that deserves punishment, I teach nice leash walking as a reinforced skill with rewards. Do I still have high expectations and want to go on dog walks without being dragged? Absolutely. Friends have even joked that holding my dog's leash is like walking a stuffed animal because there's no tension. Corrections aren't actually necessary to teach leash skills. We need to move away from this mentality that our dogs are being bad if they pull on leash. We're just two species that naturally walk much differently. Humans tend to walk in a straight line at a pretty steady pace. If you instead watch an off-leash dog, they zigzag all over the place and they adjust their pace often. Asking dogs to walk in a straight line at a steady pace because that's what we do is actually a really difficult request. We are asking an animal to move in an entirely different way than they naturally do, so let's start looking at leash walking as a skill that we need to kindly teach since we're asking our dogs to move like us. In this video, I'm going to show you how I teach both heel and loose leash walking without any tools such as choke, prong, or shock collars. In fact, I don't even use correction. How is that possible? I'm going to show you with Charlotte. This video will be a step-by-step -step beginner's guide. I'm going to explain everything that you need to know to start teaching your dog to walk nicely on leash. If you're wondering if you and your dog are beginners, let me ask you these two questions. First, does your dog walk without any tension on the leash about 95% of the time? And two, if your dog does pull on leash, do you know how to change that behavior without using the leash or another tool to correct them? If your answer is no to either of those questions, then this guide is for you. In this video, I'm going to take you along on four 30-minute sessions with Charlotte so you can see a genuine progression and how I troubleshoot the issues that come up. Charlotte is a very friendly and mischievous 10-month-old golden retriever. Like most of the dogs that I film with, she was obsessed with the fuzzy microphone on top of my camera. You can't have, you can't have it, I know. All the puppies like the thing on the top, I know. Charlotte was really fun to film with and I'm excited to show you her progress. First, let's get you set up for leash training. Before you start leash training, there's four things that I suggest your dog already knows. A loaded marker word so you can tell them when they're doing a good job. Sit. A well-trained leave it cue so that you can verbally ask them not to go after the things that they're interested in. Nira, leave it. Yes. And a well-trained drop cue so that you can verbally ask them to release the things in their mouth. Nira, drop. I'm going to link tutorials for how I teach all four in the caption below. Charlotte didn't know leave it or drop it yet, and I'm going to show you some moments on our walks where it would have been really helpful to have those cues trained. You're also going to require a lot of high value treats. I don't recommend using your dog's kibble for leash training because it's a difficult skill. Always try to match the level of reward to the level of difficulty. If you need help determining what's high value to your dog, I'm going to link a guide for that in the caption as well. In terms of equipment, I recommend using a six foot leash and a front clip harness. Until your dog is trained not to pull, I don't recommend using a collar because the pressure can damage your dog's throat. I'm going to link my favorite harness and the one that I personally use with my dog in the caption below. I also strongly encourage you to play with or exercise your dog for 10 to 15 minutes before a training session. It's important to burn off that excess energy and meet their needs before asking them to meet ours. What's the difference between heel and loose leash walking? There are two styles of walking that we're going to teach heel and loose leash. To me, heel means walking perfectly by my side at my pace. It's intentionally strict with no sniff breaks. It's essentially all about focused movement. Despite some people in the force-free world being triggered by the term heel, I still think that it's a valuable skill to teach for busy sidewalks or for those moments that you need to get somewhere quickly. Next, I define loose leash walking as the dog going anywhere that they want as long as there isn't leash tension. If they want to sniff, I stop and wait. This is the way that dogs prefer to walk because they get to adjust their own pace, they get to enjoy sniffing, and they aren't forced to walk in a straight line which is unnatural to them. I think that it's important to teach both heel and loose leash walking. 
When I'm going on training walks, I typically use each one about 50% of the time. After the dog is trained, I tend to walk them loose leash about 99% of the time and I save heel for particularly busy or distracting settings or if I need to get somewhere quickly and I don't have time for snap breaks. This might seem odd at first, but I always start leash training indoors without a leash. In order to use positive reinforcement to train a dog, we need to start in situations where they can be successful so there's something to reward. Think about it like this. If you were teaching your kid math, where would you be more successful? In your home at the table or at Disneyland? A really distracting environment makes it much more difficult to learn. For dogs, outside with all the sights, smells, and sounds is pretty much Disneyland. We don't start training in Disneyland. Next, why don't I use a leash to start? Most people are overly reliant on the leash and they use it to force their dog to stay by them. Instead, I want you to think of the leash as a safety belt rather than a steering wheel. When we go on walks, the leash is there to keep your dog safe, but it shouldn't be used to direct them. I like setting up training so that neither you or your dog need to pull on the leash. Foregoing the leash will teach you how much encouragement and reward your dog needs to choose to walk next to you. Doing it out of free choice is when you know you've built it as a proper skill. Okay, let's start training. To get a dog in proper position for healing, I like teaching them a beside cue. Typically, I like putting this on a verbal cue, but since I only had four sessions with Charlotte, I didn't bother. If you'd like me to make a video about how I put this on a verbal cue and phase out that treatler, let me know in the comments and I'll make a separate video. To get your dog in position, take one step backwards while luring your dog behind you, turn them towards you, then reward them in a sit. Make sure that you have your dog's attention before starting to walk. The first few times that I practice heel, I do it with a treatler to encourage the dog to stay in that position that I want them to be. I reward in motion every few steps so that they start to learn that walking next to me in that spot gets them great things. Please talk to your dog and make it fun so that you can keep their attention for about 15 seconds. Also, please remember that we're teaching a really hard skill, so take breaks to tell your dog how awesome they are. Good girl. Good girl. You'll notice that until I'm confident that Charlotte can heal next to me for about 15 seconds, I don't add the verbal cue heal. Instead, right now I'm just saying yes. let's go to get her started. Okay, let's go. In all of my tutorial videos, I encourage you to teach the action or behavior that you want before you name it. This makes it easier for the dog to associate the verbal cue with the action later on since it's already something that they're semi-skilled at. I also want to point out that I'm giving the treat right next to my left leg. Watch these two clips to see the difference that that makes. We want to reward our dog for being next to our knee, not for cutting in front of us. I'm quite used to rewarding with both hands, but you'll likely find it easier to use the hand that's on the same side as your dog. Charlotte learned this really quickly, so in the same session, we phased out that treatler and started with intermittent rewards. Please make sure that your dog is walking happily next to you with the treatler before progressing to this step. Good girl. Yes. All the way. You'll notice that I'm no longer using a treat as a lure right in front of her face. Let's go. Yes. Instead, I reward her when we start moving and then again every few steps or whenever yes. she turns with me. Please make sure that you don't slow down or stop to give your dog the treat. Good. We want all of this to be done in motion. 
If you have a really tiny dog, a great trick is to use a wooden spoon slathered with wet dog food or with peanut butter so you don't have to crouch over it. Yes. And try this in. Now I'll count it. Yes. Good girl. Good girl. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. Once you're confident in your dog's ability to walk next to you for about 15 seconds without a treat lure, put on their harness and leash because we're going to add the cue heel. Charlotte, heel. Good. Since we've added the cue heel and we want them to build an association with the action, I initially start with the treat lure again to help them get it right. After that, transition to rewarding them every few steps or whenever you turn. Make sure that you keep talking to your dog and make it fun so that you keep their attention and they don't break out of that heel position until you tell them to. Let's go. To finish a session, I either ask for a sit. Yes. Or I toss a treat while I say okay, which will be a precursor for loose leash walking later on. I practiced with Charlotte inside for two days before we moved to the backyard. I always like to do a warm-up round at the previous difficulty, so on day three we still started indoors. I want to show you a brief clip of this session because I accidentally dropped a treat on the ground, therefore I made the difficulty much higher. Yeah. Yes! Good girl! Good girl! You can see in this clip how distracted the treat made her. To keep her focus, I had to encourage her a lot, and I even switched to luring very briefly. Yes. Good. Okay. Yes. Good, good. Yes. Good. It's a good example of how to get your dog back if something else grabs their focus. Yes. Afterwards, I let her grab the treat, and then we did one more quick session before we went outside. Yep. Yes. Yes. Keep up. Yeah. Yes. Good girl. Okay. Turn. Yes. Each time I progress the difficulty of the setting, I like to start with a lure to help them generalize the skill. Again, I also suggest switching to luring if something comes up during a walk that your dog was not ready for. After that, I move to intermittent rewards again. At first, I reward every couple of steps or whenever I turn, then I slowly increase that duration between rewards as you practice. Please still remember to take breaks, praise your dog, and play between sets. I also started incorporating moments where I turn with Charlotte on the inside rather than the outside of my path. To start, you'll notice that I use a treat lure to keep her where she needs to be so that my knee doesn't touch her, then I phase out that lure again. Practicing turns and changing your pace can keep your dog guessing about what you're going to do next and it helps keep their focus. As you can tell from Charlotte's happy prints, it also makes the training more exciting. I also wanted to show you how I start practicing going in and out of loose leash walking. Here I'm tossing a treat as I say okay, which tells her to break out of that heel position. As long as there's no leash tension, I continue on and I reward her when she's back at my side. Then I ask her to heal and I repeat the process. Okay. 
If you're struggling to keep your dog's attention, ask yourself these five questions. First, are you using high value treats? Two, did you burn off some of their excess energy before the training session? Three, did you progress the difficulty too quickly? Four, are your training sessions too long? And five, are you rewarding frequently enough that you're building a strong reinforcement history for the behavior that you want? Often the answer to your struggles will be in one of those. I knew for the fourth session that I was gonna take Charlotte out for a walk so that I could show you how I handle higher distraction settings and how I introduce loose leash walking. However, when reviewing the backyard clips, I wasn't happy with how little you could see or hear when I was far from the camera. I want you to be able to clearly see what I'm doing, so I knew I had to come up with something. For those new to my channel, there's no team at Happy Hounds. I personally write, film, and edit all of my own videos, and there's certainly not a cameraman. So how could I give you a better camera angle? The embarrassing solution that I came up with was to wear my rock climbing helmet and GoPro. Every time you watch a clip from this point of view, remember that I'm actually looking like this. You might be wondering if I actually went out in public like that. Oh yes, I did. <coughs> Please hit like and drop a comment if you appreciate the level of public shame that I was willing to take on to make this video. You can also support this channel by checking out my line of force free merch. I'll put a link in the caption. On day four, we warmed up with a few laps around the yard. Then we went on a walk, starting yes. initially with a trailer. Yes. Good. The first time out the gate, I completely lost her attention to a sniff, so I lured her back into the backyard to try again. If your dog knows, leave it. This would be a perfect time to have used it. Okay, where do you get? Good. The same smell got her again, but this time I was able to verbally encourage her away. Good. Yes. Very good. Walk again. This time I dramatically increased the reward frequency to keep her attention. Yes. Coming up, she starts to walk slightly in front of me, so we do a turn to get her back in the right position. This way. Yes. Good. Come on, Charlotte. Let's go. Yes. Come on. Good girl. Let's read this one. Yes. You'll notice here that she walks past that original distracting smell without any difficulty and without me giving treats. It was verbal encouragement only. This is why practicing and doing repetitions before increasing the difficulty is so important. Good girl, this way. Let's go all the way to the end. Okay. Yes. Good. Yes. Charlotte, this way, come on, come on Charlotte, yes, good, let's go, good girl. Charlotte was definitely struggling more today, so we did a few laps up and down their path before we left the property. Yep, yes, good, yes, yes, come on, let's go, yes, good. When she's supposed to be in a heel, I turn and I encourage her with me whenever she goes past my knee. Let's go, Charlotte! I want to point out that there will be brief moments of leash tension if your dog pulls, but rather than tugging on the leash as a training method, I want you to verbally encourage your dog to turn with you and reward them when they do. Yes, Charlotte! Yes! Let's go! A smell here completely grabbed her focus. Verbal encouragement failed, so without pulling at all, I walk my hands up the leash, then try to lure her away, which took three attempts. Have I mentioned yet that I strongly encourage you to teach your dog a verbal leave it cue? If instead I had just let her sniff, it would have been reinforcing that she pulled towards the smell. Another great tip is to bring a few pieces of something incredibly high value, like hot dogs or chicken, for particularly challenging moments like this. Yes. I know I dropped one. This way, Charlotte. Good. This way, Charlotte. Come on. Yes. Charlotte. Yes. Good. This way. Okay, Charlotte. Okay. 
Here I say okay and toss a treat to release her to go loose leash walk. As long as there's not tension on leash, everything after that is up to her. If she wants to stop and sniff, I stop. We need to remember that dog's main sense is scent. Asking them to go for a walk without sniffing would be like us going for a walk with our eyes closed. It wouldn't be nearly as enjoyable. I recommend not going too far from home for the first couple weeks because you want to reserve enough patience for the entire walk. Charlotte, yes. Good, good. Charlotte, this way. You. Yes. Good girl. This way? Yes. If you start to struggle far from home, you might decide to let your dog drag you just to get home again and you'll undo a lot of your progress. Yes. Charlie. Yep. Charlie. Yeah. Good girl. Good girl. Charlie. Okay. For a couple short weeks, keep these boundaries about pulling on leash clear and you'll be amazed with how quickly your dog progresses. Yes. Good. I know some of you might be thinking, that's as far as she got after four sessions? Yes. It's likely going to take a few weeks before you can go on a genuine walk without all of these frequent turns. As someone who personally used correction-based methods in the past, I do understand that this is a complete mindset shift. Most leash tutorials will lead you to believe that your dog should be perfect after one session. That's actually one of the reasons that I created this video. I want to normalize a normal learning progression. I want to remind you that Charlotte had two hours of total training. If you got a new job, how proficient would you be after two hours? Imagine how stressful your work environment would be if you got physically punished for every mistake that you made while you try learning a new skill. So why do we expect these loving animals that only have a toddler mental capacity to learn faster than we could, and we feel justified teaching them with methods that we wouldn't want used on us? Watch Charlotte in these clips and pay attention to how happy she is while she's learning. That's what you want. And no, you won't always need to have treats in your hand or to do all of these crazy turns. Spend a few weeks kindly teaching your dog this hard new skill and you'll get to enjoy years of fun walks together. They're worth it. Due to scheduling, I only had these four sessions with Charlotte, but if you would like to see a more advanced tutorial where she learns to go on normal walks, including past people or dogs, please let me know in the comments. If you're looking for more tips about leash pulling, I recommend that you watch this video where I cover seven common mistakes that we make and how to fix them. 